you take over for a legend in Miami and Schnellenberger, then you go to Dallas and you're replacing Tom Landry. I mean, an institution in the NFL, certainly in that city. What was the pressure like taking over for somebody like Landry? I, I really didn't think about it. Uh, you, know, you know, people don't re realize, you know, Tom, as great a coach as Tom Landry was, and you know, I don't want to take anything away from the, all of his accomplishments. I mean, they were won three games. You know, they were a bad, bad football team. And so a lot of people were ready for a change, but they weren't sure they wanted, you know, this oil and gas guy from Arkansas and this college coach come in and take over. And, and I just said, hey, this, hey, let us prove ourselves. And I, I really didn't even, it never even phased me about taking over for somebody. The Not one, only were, you, were the Cowboys bad, but they were old, old and, bad. and bad. That's a bad combination. Yeah, they, they, were, they were slow, <laughs> real slow. <laughs> Old, real old, <laughs> and bad. They were a well-coached, three-win team. And uh, that's the personnel you inherit. Yeah, I mean, the first time we had a mini camp. See, the old days, uh, pro coaches. I mean, they didn't even have an off-season workout. They didn't even have an indoor lifting facility. It was an outdoor uh, weights. I asked the strength coach. I said, "Where are all our players?" They said, "Oh." They, you know, it's too cold here in Dallas, you know, an outdoor deal. They have, they work out. I said, how do you know what they're doing? He said, well, I call them every now and then. I said, that's going to change. <laughs> I said, we're going to be working out here four days a week in the off season. So we changed all that. And the first mini cap I had with them, I said, oh my God, I, I think my Miami team could have beat them. <laughs> and uh, I said, I got to change personnel somehow. I, I got to, you know, so Danny White retired, Randy White retired. You know, I started putting them through grass drills, and poor old Tootal Jones, I mean, who was a great, great player. You know, six, seven, he's doing monkey rolls and everything. I, I, I do all these grass drills for him. Uh, and, you know, I found out in a hurry that, you know, I had to get better players and different players. They just didn't even want to do the drills, did they? Well, the ones that stayed had to do them, you know. And, yeah, they, you know, we, you know, we were running sprints with them. We did 110s and... One kicker, you know, stopped, you know, and he said he had asthma, and I told him, I said, the asthma feels over there. <laughs> I mean, but, but, but we ended up, we, we brought in a lot of players. And, and Eric, how great, how funny is that, though? I mean, I know it's, it, it and, serves a purpose, but well, nothing you're also asthma. funny when you're I pissed. got a little asthma myself. Right. Right, really. <laughs> I mean, nothing against that. I mean, just, but there's no excuses. I don't want an excuse. There are no excuses. You either do it or you don't do it. But you guys go 1-15 and 15 that first year. You trade Herschel Walker, which is a big part of the turnaround. But, I mean, 1-15 and 15 is 1-15. and 15. Does any doubt creep into your head? No. Uh, in fact, it was almost by design. Um, you know, people talk about the Herschel Walker trade, but that was one trade. Uh, we actually, in the five years that I was there, we made 51 trades. That was more than the entire league put together. Um, to give you an example, the New York Giants in that five-year period made one trade, and that was with me. But I knew if I played the old NFL way of taking your pick wherever it fell and get the best player available, going pick by pick on a team was, that was that bad, we would never be around to see anything good. Because, you know, we couldn't get good fast enough. Evidently, day one of your first effort with the Cowboys on the blackboard was written by one Jimmy Johnson, P-A plus E equals P. This is simple, simple for everybody. Yeah, you have so much God-given talent, and you really can't control that. You can control your effort and your attitude. Now, positive attitude plus effort equals your performance. You know, if you control your attitude and you control your effort, your performance is going to go up. So, you know, Guys are so big and so fast and so talented, you know, I can't control that. But I can control your attitude and your effort. And if we improve those two things, and any, any individual, 
in your job. I mean, if, hey, I mean, we're all, we all get in ruts. We all get in such habits. And, and plus human nature is, you know, we all get comfortable with the way we've got money in our pocket and things are going good. You know, every now and then we need to pull back just a little bit and say, how can I get better? And how I can get better is the two things that you can control. You can control your attitude, you plant that positive seed in your mind, and you work harder. You know, you know, you know, you, you, it, it, it's amazing. People say, well, I, I, I put in my eight hours. You know what? During those eight hours, you know how many other people are working? It's pretty competitive. But you work that ninth hour and that tenth hour and that eleventh hour, there's not a lot of competition. You work a little longer and all of a sudden the competition falls out. You know, hard work overcomes a lot of things. Now, it comes with a price. I mean, my hard work, I mean, I, I spent night and day. I lived two blocks from the Dallas Cowboy Complex. And I was, I was over there 24 hours a day almost. I mean, really, I, I, I would go home to sleep a few hours. Um, it comes with a cost. Well, let's take a look at the video from the first time you got to the top after that 1992 NFC Championship game. I know you had said it before this, the cameras are in there, and this is when that great phrase was, uh, was in essence coined by Jimmy Johnson. Hey, fantastic, 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 every single one of you. Excuse I mean, me. I'm, and I'm not just talking about these last 60 minutes. I'm talking about the quarterback schools, the mini camps, we all see them. Everybody, you did one hell of a job. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about them Cowboys? Yeah! Yeah! After that, how about those Cowboys thing? We knew. I mean, San Francisco was the best team that year. But that particular day, we were the best. We beat them. We were playing Buffalo the next week. We knew we were going to beat Buffalo. Buffalo turned the ball over too much. There was no question. I, I never, never coached a game in my entire life, entire life, that I, I was as confident as what I was in that first Buffalo game. We had two weeks to prepare for them. There's no way they're going to beat us. And so I knew by winning that game, we had just won the Super Bowl. Ten-yard line. Aikman, a draw to Smith. Coming left, breaks those, cuts to the five. Turning it to one. Cowboys are back on top of the mountain now. They were there in the 70s, fell off in the 80s. They're back on top now, and they should stay there a while. Wow. That's all they've been for all year, They've been for that moment all year. Troy Aikman's the MVP. Jimmy Johnson's taking his team from the absolute worst to the absolute best. Get that there fixed up. Everybody goes right to the hair right away. I know. Even Jerry came up and was patting you down up there. One of the few times I let anybody touch my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's after a championship. You're right. Uh, and, and two, if there was a tape of what you and Jerry were saying to each other when you were giving each other a hug at the end of that, I'd love to hear that. Wait, do, you, do you have any recollection as to what you two said each, uh, I, I to each other? I think we, we both called each other a sorry SOB or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I have no idea what we said. Please. 